I'm Cameron Swords. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Indiana University. I'm ABD. And uh, this summer, I worked on the procedural microsystem in Rust. In case for some reason you don't know, Rust is a memory safe, multi paradigm programming language that features zero cost abstractions, ownership semantics, trait based generics, pattern matching, static typing, and syntactic macros. That's, that's the part I did. Uh, as sort of some context, uh, a macro is a function that works over syntax. So instead of taking data as input and producing data as output, a macro takes syntax as input and produces syntax as output. So here in this example of code, we're defining a function called one even that takes uh, two inputs and checks if either is even by calling this macro or bang. Uh, and what this is going to do is before the compiler runs on the output code, this macro is going to do what we call expand and turn into another program that is then compiled, right? And so orbing might expand to this where we check if A is even, and if so, we return true, and if not, we check if B is even and just return the result of that. And the idea here is in general, we're just going to, uh, yeah, a macro takes syntax and produces syntax, so it gets literally even of A comma even of B instead of those two expressions evaluated to data. So in Rust today, um, there are sort of two macro systems. We have this macro rules macros, this beautiful Cadillac, you know, 69 uh, Cadillac Coupe de Ville. You get in, nice Sunday drive, nice, nice into work, out of work, whatever you want to do. It's beautiful, it's comfortable. And then we have these syntax extensions, which are like, I don't know, driving a dune buggy, right? It's sort of fun, it's not particularly practical if you're trying to get somewhere in a city. Get you over a mountain if you need, I guess. Uh, to, to, to be a little more concrete, um, macro rules macros are these syntax to syntax operations that use a restricted template language that convert, um, you know, you just like specify a template. When you get input shaped like this, make an output shaped like that. Whereas syntax extensions are, are just arbitrary programs, arbitrary functions that take compiler internal ASTs and produce compiler internal ASTs. So anytime the compiler internals change, your macro breaks. These are pretty unstable in Rust right now, and part of the goal here is uh, there's a plan for macros 2.0 in the glorious future uh, where we're going to get rid of all of this, right? We're going to get rid of syntax extensions, and instead we're going to have arbitrary code that works over an abstract representation of syntax, uh, taking it in and producing it. That's uh, one step away from what's actually inside of the compiler, so as the compiler changes, uh, these macros won't break and the interface won't change, and these will be called procedural macros. Uh, in case you didn't follow that, here's the idea. We're gonna keep the Cadillac, and instead of a dune buggy, we're gonna get a Cadillac dune buggy. <laughs> All right, so the path forward for this is um, t tolerably straightforward. We're gonna build some sort of uh, abstraction over rush syntax that we're gonna call token streams. Then we're going to build some syntax creation tools for macro authors so that they don't have to directly interact with uh, building syntax themselves verbosely. Next, we're going to convert the user interface to take token streams and produce token streams. We're going to hide away the current plugin registration system, which I'm not even going to mention. And then we're going to construct additional programmer tools in the form of libraries to make this even easier. Uh, this summer, I worked on the first two, and that's what I'm going to be talking about for the rest of the time. Uh, so token streams, in a nutshell, encapsulate this idea that macro input shouldn't be a compiler internal construct, but it should retain some amount of general structure, right? So here we have an invocation of orbang again, where the first argument is you know, even of A plus C, and the second is even of B. But what that macro actually gets as input is this more abstract structure, right? It's sort of like a vector, it's got these nested calls, and you can see sort of those gray lines in there which uh, break things up. And this, this is what the actual macro receives as input. It doesn't get some representation in the AST. It gets this abstract structure over that. Uh, the idea is that these token streams are these indexable streams of tokens. Uh, they also provide all the usual operations over structures in Rust that you might want, like iteration, splitting them up, et cetera. For example, here we might want to split this on a comma, right? So we can call split, and this is just some Rust syntax to provide a little closure that when it returns true, splits will occur there. So we say if the token I'm on is the comma token, split the list there. Uh, this will turn into two sub-token streams that are actually just redirected pointers down to the original thing uh, because this is all represented internally with a persistent rope data structure for efficiency. Uh, let me do math off the top of my head. Okay. 
And then the other nice thing is that because they're ropes internally, we can just sort of concatenate them for free, if you will. Uh, so for example, it, getting back to or, we need to build this if, we need to build this block, we need to build this else clause as syntax here in red. Uh, we sort of start stitching it together and then you know we just call concat a couple of times where we're gonna stitch if with the first slice and then we're gonna concatenate that with the block true and once again concatenate that with the else which points to the second slice. This is all fairly mechanical and the data structure follows pretty directly. Uh, of course, externally, like nobody ever sees that after you, you know, after you call concat, you just get another token stream back. And so this is what the compiler actually sees as output, the sort of flat structure that represents the syntax we actually want to produce as the result of that uh, macro invocation that then gets compiled. Uh, and if we look at this in code, we get something that sort of looks like this, right? This is an implementation of Orbang. It takes a token stream, it produces a token stream, it splits the input, it builds the if, the true, the else, some braces, it calls concat a bunch of times. Uh, if you're looking at this, at least for me, like I don't, I don't want to actually do this. This seems painful, right? Uh, the, in fact, I shouldn't have to manually construct the syntax even, right? We, we know how to build syntax. We know what the programmer wants to build for syntax. They want to build REST syntax. We, we know what that looks like, right? So let's provide another structure for syntax creation. So this is the second part of stuff that I worked on this summer. The idea here is we'll introduce another macro called quote bang which just takes something that looks like REST syntax and actually produces the code that will construct it. It'll produce the code we saw on the last slide that'll actually construct that syntax construction. Uh, here we have these two variables with dollar signs in front of them. The idea is that we should also be able to refer to variables in our local scope. Like for example, the first and second tests, right? And so that dollar sign says escape this and grab the thing out of local scope and bind that all together. And then the resultant code is, you know, once quote bang expands inside of the definition of this macro, it'll actually produce an emission with the correct concatenations. So a user doesn't even have to fuss with all of the direct construction. They can just use this macro to get exactly what they're after. Uh, some other things I did this summer, I cleaned up the attribute abstraction in the compiler, which, which involved a lot of uh, just chasing things around to sort of remove enums and replace them with more uh, abstract operators and encapsulation. I started converting attributes to use token streams by extending that interface and cleaning it up, making the token stream interface robust enough that we can start rewriting parts of the compiler to use attributes, which will then make attribute macros easier later. And I did a lot of token stream user interface pro prototyping for the structuring, et cetera. You know, is this uh, a common delimited parenthesis expression? If so, just give me the things between the commas back as a list that sort of stuff to just make macro writers' lives that much easier, not only in constructing output syntax, but taking apart input syntax in a logical way. Uh, thank you, I'd like to thank before anything else, uh, obviously the university team, my mentor Nick Cameron, who was a great uh, aide, the rest of the Rust team, uh, Aaron Turan and Alex, get a special shout out for lunch crew in SF, and all of the rest of my interns, uh, thanks a lot. And I'll take questions if anybody has them. Cool. <laughs>